Oh, oh, bacon, oh. bacon, 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 bacon. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Bass Quest. Today, we're going to talk about how you can catch more and bigger fish with an Alabama rig or castable umbrella rig by doing things a little bit different than everybody else. Okay, for starters, you're going to get to see me catching some fish on the rig on Chickamauga a couple weeks ago with a good buddy of mine. After that, we're going to move into some teaching. I'm actually going to go through, pull out a bunch of my rigs right here. You guys are going to get to see what I use. And finally, to end the video, I'm actually going to do a map study with you so you get to see how I think or how I break down the lake depending on on the time of year to catch fish on a rig. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Oh, yeah, I got him. I got him that time. Oh, he came off. Oh. Yeah, right at the top of my cast, it's out of position. Had him. <laughs> Did you ever get the hook in it? Eight foot of glory. It's a horrible cast. Oh, I so hard. I tried. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna send it one more cast. I'm gonna go over top of it. Oh, oh go bacon, 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 bacon. Net. No, it ain't that big a game sideways. <laughs> he was he was in two different hooks, so he was. That's a seven, dude. That ain't no seven. Huh? It's like a three pound. It's like a, a three. Dude, that's a seven. Dude, that's every bit of eight. No. Dude, I got a scale. Dude. That's probably seven, at least. That is a seven. Pounder. Four pounder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that fish knocks slack in it. Oh. Look at that, guys. Hog farmer in the mouth. Let's check him real quick. I thought it was big at first. Dude, that's a seven. No. I bet it won't even go five. Yeah. I'll be surprised if it goes five. He's it's just fat. He's got a build on him. Yeah. Oh. Hold on. <clears throat> I just smoked it. He is. Uh, let's put him in. We'll wait till the end of the day. See how big, how big a bag we got. Alright. If your scale won't work, I've got one in my truck. He's cutie. Cutie pie honey bun right there. Oh, that fish. <laughs> the guy just caught a big one. The guy just caught a big one over there. There he is. Oh. Man, he took the freaking air out behind it. How did that not? Jeez. Oh, Jesus. Trucked it again, didn't get it. How are y'all doing that? Tail off of there.
Jeez. There he is, got him at the... <laughs> a little piece of junk fish. That's what she gets, huh? Very nice. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Sometimes I'll just I got it on a uh, dog leash. You want it put on a dog leash? You got it. Hmm? Got it. Oh, you got it? Hmm? What thing? Use your hands. Is the key, yeah. not the rod. You just got better feel. You just sit there and mess with it. You can feel it bumping. Where are they at? <laughs> yeah. Playing hard to get. before it's time to go work until 11 o'clock. Well, but you don't probably leave till after 11. Students, probably Brian, Brian Lyons. Hmm, they yeah, hey, a couple of fish over there. I was looking at that too. Maybe our last minute glory there. There he is, bacon, bacon, real bacon, huh? real bacon. Yep. Maybe not. Maybe. Oh, he is. He is big. Uh, yeah, he's a big. Un. Big head shakes. Big? Un? Yep. Big head shakes. Oh, oh, ain't that man. big? Ain't that big? Yeah. Another. Another five pounder. Dude. Stick him in that well real quick. That's 
ships one Hey, what I told you about fishing them points, or them, them marks, dude. I know, that's why I saved it until last. Somebody, somebody didn't listen. Somebody I don't know who that is. Joe, I was trying to tell him. I, I'm gonna tell everybody. So I, I tried to get Joe to go over here, but he wouldn't let me. Go to these freaking marks. Okay. No. I want Hold to up. Fish Look, there's there. nothing here. Let's fish here for a minute. Then he pulls up on a. He pulls up on a point. I gotta wait till Joe gets tired and not on his game. We'll pull up and catch the big one. It's my strategy. You see my strategy now. Dang it. I'm talking bad. He was talking bad about mama and China. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Going back. Dude. Freaking awesome, man. Chickamauga. Chunks right there. So we'll see you next time. Later, Gators. Hope y'all enjoyed that footage of us catching those really nice fish on the rigs. Now we're going to transition, like I said, into doing more of the teaching type thing. All right, first and foremost, it's important to pick the right kind of rig depending on the conditions. In the beginning part of the rig fishing season, to me, that's late summer into the fall. Um, what you'll find is fish are moving. They're migrating into the creeks. They're migrating on to main lake stuff like flats and things like that. And they're following shad. They're going to be active. A lot of times they're busting top. And what I like to use is a lighter rig. Here's an example of one that I caught a lot of fish on this fall. This is a three wire rig. You can see it's light wire as well. And I've got blades on this one. Sometimes I use blades that time of year. Sometimes I don't. It seems like to me the fish are a lot more finicky. Um, you want something very natural. So in this particular situation using this downsized rig, a lot of times I use straight fluorocarbon and lighter fluorocarbon. Um, light rig like this, you can get away with 15 to 17 pound test really easily. You'll notice this rig, it's very collapsible. So when you're burning that thing you're usually higher in the water column you're burning it quick you're popping it a lot when you're doing that this thing will collapse on itself and looks like a, a school of bait that's up high in the water column that's fleeing and that time of year it seems to really get those fish fired up now moving on to late fall into the winter transition things are getting a lot colder I'll use a typical like a five wire rig with five blades but I also like a lot I like this five wire eight blade rig from hog farmer and one thing I like about it, you get more blade, heavier wire. This thing is not collapsing as much, but since the wires are so long, even with the heavier wire, it still is doing it some. So it's a little bit less of a collapsing action or a little bit less of a pulsating action, but it still gets the job done. And you can still cast this thing and reel it relatively quickly, which is what those fish want to see. Now we start transitioning into the, the winter months. It starts getting really cold out there. That water tip starts to plummet. We start getting below 45 degree water temperatures that's when I really like a bigger rig this harvester rig from hog farmer really stands out at that point heavier heavier wire right here and they're shorter wires so when you pop that thing or you do that fast reel handle turn that thing doesn't collapse as much it's a muted action because if you think about it that bait fish school is going to have a much more muted action at that time as well so it's really good you can see one thing that I do is on a lot of these rigs is I'll switch out some of the blades for um, two-tone blades that are a little bit bigger and that'll that'll help in the winter time to keep that thing a little higher in the water column okay let's talk about swim baits I get all my swim baits for my rigs from Saudi custom tackle and there's very specific ones that I like to use early in the year we're talking warmer water I like to use a semi hollow body or even a hollow body swim bait let me see if you can see that see how realistic that thing looks very realistic in the water and again we're talking about finicky fish we're talking about shallower water fish they can see this thing really well and this thing even though it doesn't you can see it's got a little bit more meat towards the tail it does doesn't kick as good when you get into the colder water months. So once that thing gets, you know, sub 50 degree, 55 degree water temperatures, this one doesn't kick as well at low speed. But it doesn't matter because I'm burning that thing a lot of times in the fall. It's moving quick and they really like that live presentation there. Okay, now we're talking about transitioning into the winter time. Time water temps fall, they get below 50, they get towards 45. This Kitek style swim bait is really good then. 
you can see much less meat on the tail there. And what that means is that at low speeds in colder water, this guy will look and kick natural versus some other types of swim baits. So that's really good as the water starts to fall. Now I'll fish this, this Kitek style way down towards 40 degrees, you know, even lower than that sometimes. But at a certain point, I'll notice it doesn't kick as much anymore. And I can't really just crawl that thing anymore and get the action that I want. And that's when a grub or this little chicken foot, this is actually a chicken foot grub right there. This little guy can be absolute money and get the job done. Do you see that? And that thing, no matter how cold it is, it'll, even current will just make that tail move and it really gets those fish to fire. Now Brad and Mark over at Saudi Custom Tackle are awesome guys and they make colors for me. So I'll tweak these colors and a lot of times I don't put the same colors on the rig. I'll switch out to two different colors. Say if it's clear, I have two natural colors on there and see what the fish like throughout the day. If the water's a little bit more stained or murky, I'll have a natural color and a sartreuse color, like a sexy shad color, where I might have something with a little bit more smoke in there. So you can tweak that on the rig depending on the situation. You can see on this one, I've got a couple of different types of swim baits on it as well. Another thing that these guys at Saudi Custom Tackle do for me is they put these baits in a stock worm oil for me. Now what that oil does is it penetrates the plastic. It actually makes the bait swell up just a little bit, so they're a little bit bigger than they normally would be, but they're very soft. I go through a few more swim baits throughout the day, but when that fish gets a hold of it, it feels right in their mouth. It's got that oily texture. Um, everything about it works the way it's supposed to, and it'll kick at a much lower temperature than it normally would. So I can use some of those swim baits that are more realistic in colder temperatures than most guys would be able to do effectively. Okay, when you're talking about the swim bait heads, it's extremely important. It's it's one of the most important aspects of doing this. You do not want to overweight an Alabama rig. What you really want that thing to do is come through the water column horizontally. You don't want it looking like this. I mean, a bait fish school, they don't swim vertically like that. It won't look natural if you have too much weight on your hooks in the back there. So what you want to do is make sure that thing's properly killed out. In other words, you want your heavier weight at the bottom of the rig, but all in all, you want to go as light as you possibly can, depending on the situation. So let's talk earlier in the year again. I'm probably going to use on this three wire rig over here, an eighth ounce head on the bottom and two sixteenth ounce heads on the top. And that thing will stay high in the water column, but I can easily fish it down to eight, 10, 12 foot or so, which is very common during that time. As the fall goes on, I have a couple rigs because a lot of times those fish are in that eight to 10, or they might even be 16 foot if we just had a cold front run in. So a lot of times my money setup for that time is two three sixteenths ounce heads on the bottom and an eighth ounce head on that middle one. That tends to be really good if the fish are a little deeper as that water temp starts to drop off a little bit more. Then I'm gonna pull out a rig that's got two quarter ounce heads on the bottom and a 3 16 ounce head in the middle. I can fish that thing down comfortably all the way down to 20, 25 feet or so. Last but not least, when it's brutal and I pull out the big chandelier, pull out that harvester, I like two quarter ounce heads on the bottom of it most of the time and a 3 16 ounce on it. But it'll still get down deeper than the other one just because it has all the rest of that hardware and stuff. So it's a heavier rig in general. I haven't told a lot of people about this, but one thing that you can do on these rigs is you can walk them through cover. We're gonna talk about that more in a second, but a weighted swim bait head, screw lock swim bait hook like that can be money. I might wanna keep that one to yourself. All right, point number two here, we're gonna talk about how I actually work that bait. Now there's a couple ways I do it. First is kind of a horizontal presentation. I'm fishing for fish that are suspended or fish that are on the close to, on or close to the bottom and looking up. Now a lot of times I'm counting this thing down or I'm hitting the bottom and then engaging the reel and continue to reel it and keep it three, four feet off the bottom, but it's a horizontal presentation. And this is the way most people fish it. You know, you're reeling it. I don't do a straight retrieve though. I'm reeling it slowly through the water column or a little bit quicker, depending on if it's earlier in the season. I'm gonna pop that thing occasionally and I'm gonna use my reel handle. You saw me in that video doing that quite a bit. And that's usually when that triggers that fish to strike. Now the other way I like to fish these rigs, especially that harvester, is I'll spread these first four way, way out. And I'll put my dummies on there. And what that does is it allows this bait to walk over cover. And then on the back, I put those weighted swim bait hooks. And I can actually pull this thing through brush piles. I can pull it across the bottom. And that really gets those fish to fire, especially if you're talking about pulling it over. You know, might, might have a brush pile in 25 foot of water and I'll pull it over a limb and then pull 
pulse it and it swims a little bit and those fish will tag it on the other side of the limb. It's kind of similar to the way you do a lot of cold water spinner baiting. Just treat it like a gigantic spinner bait. Okay, now let's talk about rod and reel combos. When you're talking about that light rig, it's a great starter rig because you still can catch those fish all the way across the year with it. But the nice thing is, it's so small. I mean, it's not much bigger than or, or different than casting a big spinner bait. You can throw this on, you know, I like maybe a frog rod, 7.3 heavy action. It's got a little bit more moderate to it. You can throw it on a, you know, a flipping stick, a lightweight flipping stick out there and lighter line. I mean, I throw that on 15 pound test, 17 pound test. So it's, it's an easy presentation a lot of guys can do with a standard reel to a regular 200 size reel, a seven one to one or seven gear ratio, six gear ratio reel. These are perfect. As you graduate into you know the non-bladed bigger rigs or you get into a mid-sized rig like this, I tend to graduate up a little bit. I'm thinking a wide spool reel, like a cranking reel. Maybe that BB1 Pro um, from Lou's, that'd be a great reel for that because it holds a lot of line. It's a beefier reel that you can really toss this thing out there and you can control it at probably more like a six gear ratio reel, five gear ratio reel. These size baits are perfect for that. And a lot of rigs that are a little bit smaller than this are perfect for that. Cause you're talking about, you know, a one, two ounce rig. When we start talking about the big rig here. We talk about the big umbrella. This is the harvester rig again. This thing, when it's all rigged up, I mean, we're talking three, four, five ounces, depending on how you rig this bad boy up. So I'm thinking a much bigger rod, um, a, you know, 795, a 711 five power rod, a small swim bait rod is perfect for the bigger rigs. And that eight blade too, you know, like a 795 size rod is perfect for that. And I do like a moderate action. It's a little bit too much to throw on a flipping stick. And really reel wise, you want a bigger reel. I think a 300 size reel in a five to six gear ratio is perfect for those really big baits because it has way more drag than just a standard spinner bait or a big mag crank bait. That'll wear you out throughout the day if you have an undersized reel and it'll wear you out casting it if you have an undersized rod and reel combination. All right, next we're gonna get into the map study, but before we get into that, I got a neat trick for you. These umbrella rigs are so unruly that they're hard to store and they make technique specific tackle boxes for them. There's a lot of ways to store them, like rubber bands and stuff, but an easy way that you can do it and get them on and off is take a little bit of wire or a paper clip into a triangle like this. You run the rig into the triangle and then into the small notch right there. So it's like that, yeah. And then you just bend the paperclip back into a normal paperclip shape. It takes like two seconds to do this. And it just holds that all together. And it works for the big rigs too, but I just wanted to show you with that. Kind of a cool thing, kind of keeps everything collapsed and all together. That way you can easily shove it into like a plastic Ziploc bag if you're fishing with somebody else or anything like that. Okay, when you're talking about places that you can find fish to catch with these Alabama rigs, typically in the fall, you're gonna find those fish pushing back into creeks and then pushing back out again as the temperatures get really cold, they're gonna follow and migrate with the shad. They also get onto these main lake flats and things. So here's Nickajack Lake. You can see this is a backwater area that's perfect for those fish to run back into. And where you'll catch them with the rig coming out, you can see things like this. You got a little point right here. You got inside turns. And a lot of times in the fall time, I notice these fish will really show themselves to you. So if you're looking, look for bird activity, look for bait activity, for fish actually busting, then you can go over there and go ahead and catch those fish. As it gets colder, the fish begin to push out towards the main lake and it gets into the winter time. You're talking about mid-sized rigs. Areas like this, you see this is main lake. You got a point or a little hump coming out right there. Got inside turns. Those are the kind of places those fish will stack up. And sometimes they'll still show themselves to you, especially if you got white bass in your lake, you'll see little swirls here and there. You'll see in the, the morning time and in the evening time, you'll see bait fish higher in the water column. You'll see them on your graph and you can go ahead and find these fish and catch them. It's a perfect time to catch them with those mid-sized rigs. Winter time, cold, cold time here. A place that I like to look, here's another ditch, an actual pronounced ditch mouth right here. Those fish, a lot of times, they'll be up on these little, the sides of the uh, ditch itself, but a lot of times they'll be right in the swag. So I would expect to find fish right here um, on little hard spots as well, they'll be there. But again, those are areas that I like to, in the morning time, what I'll do is I'll go graph. And that's actually what we did in this video. You saw Joe and I catch those fish. We graphed those areas in the morning, saw where those fish were, came back a couple hours later and actually caught those fish. He was giving me a hard time because I didn't go to those areas much faster. We probably would have caught more fish if I did. 
All right, another place I like to throw a rig is along bluff walls, especially on the transitions. And sometimes those fish will get and stack in these areas, but more than likely, I find them where the bank transitions. So you get this little gut right here. That's a good wintertime looking spot where you should be able to find some fish to target with that rig. Um, all these areas, what I'm talking about is fishing that thing horizontally higher in the water column for fish looking up. However, um, if you find cover, so not structure, that's main lake stuff, but cover on those like a big log or a tree or something, that's a good time to break out the one with the swim bait hooks and slow down and drag that thing in those areas, especially if it's ultra cold. Another bluff area to transition, you can see how tight those lines are. That's got to be a bluff wall and another transition right there. So same kind of deal. And you can easily move down the lake. Again, boom, there's a spot. It's this flooded timber right there, but this time of year, those fish should be right on this outside edge of that little drain there. Again, boom, got another one. This one's less pronounced, so it might not have as many fish in it. When you're talking about a better drain, you know, I'm thinking something more pronounced like this or an inside turn like that right there. You can see the a lot more uh, depth to it. Really good wintering hole. That magic 12 to 16, 18 foot seems to be really good. Let's move down Lake Moore. All right. It's a good looking spot right there too. Look at that inside turn. Boom. Current hitting that thing. Those fish can tuck right into there. It's a good spot. Another area. More of a bluffy area, and then you got a transition, a little ditch right there. That kind of stuff is perfect. And we can go on and on. And we're going to do a lot more of this in the live streams, guys. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of help in the meantime. All right, one more thing I forgot to do. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Hog Farmer. The reason why I use his rigs is just they have a lot better components than anything else I've ever used. He uses high quality snaps. Um, he uses dual ball bearing swivels, which they spin like the blades and stuff. They'll spin no matter what, no matter how slow you reel that thing through the water, those things will spin constantly. The wire is good quality. I never have problems with the harnesses or anything like that. I mean, I'll take this thing right now. I'm fishing it on 80 pound braid and I'll pull, I use light quote unquote wire hook but they're heavier on this big rig and I can pull this thing out and it doesn't hurt it only bends the hook it doesn't hurt my snap at all I don't have to worry about that and they're relatively easy to work with as well as far as getting a bait on there so shout out to him make sure if you're gonna buy some rig go ahead and support hog farmer support Scott over there those guys know what they're doing all right last thing I promise if you want more tips on how to set up an Alabama rig how to you know initially get it out of the package spread it all that kind of cool stuff make sure you check out my friend Alex Rudd's channel he's got a really good video he did recently on on that I'm gonna link it down below and I'm also gonna link hog farmer as well as some of the other places that I use so check out that description and that's it okay thanks for watching this long hope you enjoyed the fish catches the teaching the map study and everything else as always if you like the video go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me um, make sure you leave a comment down below what did I say that you agreed with what did you not agree with what would you add to it I'm always curious to know from you guys if you have any questions go ahead and post them down below as well Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. It really helps me out. Ring that bell for notifications. But as always, guys, I hope this week finds you out on the water, and I'll catch you there.